Four seems to be the magic number for when a horror franchise is going to outer space. Leprechaun 4, Critters 4, Alien 4... Wait, those are all in space. Anyway, when a franchise goes into space, that's where it goes to die. Granted, given that this series is all about demons escaping from hell, technically there are no limits to where it can go, but given that the past three movies were grounded on present-day Earth, it's still quite a leap. To be fair, only about a third of the movie takes place in orbit. Bloodline is exactly what it suggests. It's a movie that transcends a couple of centuries, going back to the creator of the puzzle box before winding up in the future, where the creator's descendant finally attempts to put an end to Pinhead's path of evil. I know, that sounded really cliché. But I just review movies, I don't make them. It starts off, of course, in space, with engineer Paul Merchant being incarcerated after summoning Pinhead to his space station. Great timing, guys. In custody, Merchant explains the origins of the puzzle box, which began in the 18th century with his ancestor, Philippe Le Marchand, a French toy maker commissioned to design a mysterious box that seemingly has no power. Le Marchand delivers the box to a corrupt magician, who sacrifices a whore, I guess, transforming her into a demon named Angelique. 200 years later, Le Marchand's descendant, an architect named John Merchant, has built an entire building resembling the puzzle box. This is where the majority of the movie takes place. Pinhead and Angelique know that Merchant has the power to create an anti-puzzle box, one that can harness the power of light to close down the gates of hell and stop them constantly invading Earth. In a dick move, Pinhead kidnaps Merchant's son and forces him to work on the device so Pinhead can use it to invade Earth for all eternity. Things don't go well for Merchant, but Merchant's wife, played by Kim Myers from Freddy's Revenge, stops Pinhead and her son continues the bloodline. The story decides to skip a couple centuries ahead, where we get to the final act, where, after a couple of space marines get knocked off by Pinhead and his demon pup, they finally believe Merchant's story and allow him to finish his design. The climax is predictable. Come on, he designed the space station to resemble a large puzzle box, who didn't see that one coming? Still, it's got a strange 2001-esque feel to it, and the light show is impressive. Seriously, the special effects aren't great, but given that this predates Jason X by six years, they're a lot better here. The disappointment doesn't come from this one taking place in space. Hell, it isn't even that bad. They managed to keep the tone pretty serious while up there, so that didn't bother me. It's that, like hell on Earth, Bloodline just isn't that gory. Now, I'm over this argument. Horror movies don't need to be gory to be effective. But Hellraiser raised the bar for graphic horror fantasy, and as the films went on, they took a lot less risk and lowered the graphic violence considerably. Of the four theatrical Hellraisers, this one was the most tame. There are barely any Cenobites aside from the Siamese twins, and even Pinhead isn't given much to do, despite being a major player in this movie. It's very underwhelming, and aside from the space portion, it's uninspired. That's a shame, given that the first two movies were really inventive and probably cost a lot less to make. This one gets two chopping hell dog heads. You've been away too long, princess. This is not a room. This is a holocaust waiting to wake itself. 